to the second experiment. Uh, this one. Just move. Yeah. Now, welcome to this experiment. This one is going to be based on electricity, and it's a physics experiment. And uh, hopefully, this is something that will be helpful for you when you are uh, studying electricity for uh, the exams that you're writing now or the ones that are coming at the end of the year. Uh, what we are going to do is we are going to investigate the relationship between two things in an electric circuit. So what we've got is we've got a little uh, light bulb. It's a simple torch light bulb that you would find in, uh, in a torch. And we've got some connecting wires and I've got three cells and we've also got an ammeter and a voltmeter. And these two things are going to help us to take measurements and using them we're going to find if there's a relationship between uh, what the ammeter tells us and what the voltmeter tells us. So there's the picture of the apparatus on the board. Uh, each of you have got uh, Panasonic batteries which are still fairly good, they have been used before. Uh, these ones are nice and new, so my values that I'm going to take now might be a bit higher than the ones that, that you get, that's absolutely fine. But what I'm going to do is, I'm going to demonstrate what you need to do in groups of, uh, of four, there will be a few groups of five, I've got six workstations, so we'll need three groups of, of five. And uh, in, in your groups, you're going to put together a circuit and take some readings. So let me show you how that works. I need to connect my light bulb with my cell. So I'm going to start with just one cell and these uh, little blue cell holders connect together like that. So that's how we would connect two cells and if you want to connect a third or later in your experiment you add it in like that. So that's how you would connect three cells together but I'm going to start with one there is my cell, and in order to connect it, I have got some connecting wires. This is what we call a crocodile clip. It's got a mouth on the end that looks like a crocodile, um, very, very small crocodile. And then over here, we've got what we call banana clips, because these bulge ends here look a bit like uh, bananas. And so, I've got two red ones, two black ones, and you'll see in your ammeter and your voltmeter, you've got some red connections and some black connections. So the red cables are for the red connections, black cables are for the black connections. Okay, so here is my cell. I'm going to start by connecting the one end of the cell to the one side of the light bulb. You see there are two little screws there and you just clip it on to the screw. Why is my light bulb not shining? because my circuit is not closed. In order for the light bulb to shine, I have to have current flowing to the light bulb and then from the light bulb back to the cell circuit. It has to go in a complete circuit. So at the moment, it's broken because I haven't connected these two things together. So that's what I'm going to do. But I want to also put this ammeter in. And what the ammeter is going to tell me is it's going to tell me how much current is moving in the circuit. So I'm going to connect my ammeter. I'll need a black banana clip, which I connect into the black connection. And from this, you'll see there's another crocodile clip. I connect that onto the light bulb. But you'll see that still the circuit is not complete, so the light bulb isn't shining. Then I need a red clip. And I'm going to take my red clip and the banana part of it I'm going to put into the middle red button. I'll explain why we use the middle one uh, shortly and then from here connect it back to the cell and you will notice hey, hey. <laughs> we made lights. What do you think would happen if I added another cell? What do you think would happen to my light bulb? Yes. Yeah. The bulb will be brighter. So if you add another cell, the bulb will go brighter. Absolutely correct. If you add another one after that, it will be even brighter. If you add too many, the bulb will blow and then it will be dark. So we don't want to add too many cells, that's why you've only got three. So we've added one cell and I've now got a reading on here 
which uh, is quite complicated. So this is an area that a lot of students struggle with, is reading this ammeter. Because we've got three different sets of numbers. On the top we've got 0, 100, 200, all the way through to 500 milliamps. In the middle we've got 0 to 50 milliamps. And then at the bottom we've got 0 to 5 amps. So the reason we choose different uh, connections is depending on what current we have. At the moment, I've chosen in the middle, I've chosen the 500 milliamp connection. You'll see the numbers are given there. So I've chosen the 500 one, which means when I read my values, I must read off the 500 scale at the top. So you'll see there's one that ends in 500 milliamps, and that's the one that I'm going to be looking at. So if I look at it, there's, no, there's 100, there's 200, so it's in between. So if I look at that, it's around about 160 milliamps. So on your, uh, on your experiment sheet, you'll see a place to record your results. So don't record mine, but that's where you would put that in. So for one cell, for one cell, I have a reading of around about 160 milliamps. But you'll see on your table that your current it can't be in milliamps, it has to be in amps. The way we get from milliamps to amps is you have to divide by 1,000, which takes 0 0,16 amps. And that's what you would then put in that part of the table. So we've got a reading for current. Now, if we were to connect this into the wrong pop, we've got three. If I connected it to the first one, to 50 milliamps, Look, that value there is greater than 50. See what happens here. It goes straight past 50. So does that help us? No. no it, it goes to the end and it could be 2,000 milliamps, it could be 150, it could be 60 milliamps, and we wouldn't know. It just goes straight to the end. If I connect it into the 5 amp one, can you see a reading? Very difficult to see that reading because it's so small. It's like all the way down here near zero. So if you connect it into the wrong ones, you'll know because you can't actually read uh, a reading. So we're going to connect it into the middle. There we go. Now we've got a reading that we can read. So this is our ammeter. And we've connected it into our circuit. Very nicely, it makes a nice complete circuit. What I have to do now is I have to connect my voltmeter, which is this one here. So we've measured with our ammeter. We've measured the current going through my light bulb. Now I need to measure the, uh, what we call the voltage, also known as the potential difference. It's going to tell me how much energy is being used in my light bulb. So again, the black connection goes in the uh, black part, and that is connected to the side of the cell closest to the negative uh, part of the cell. You'll see there's a negative symbol, which means that gets connected to the negative side of the light bulb. So here's the negative, there's negative there. I'm going to connect it in there. You'll notice it doesn't show a reading yet because I have to also connect this part. I'm going to connect it in the first one, which is 3 volts. And let me connect this on here and you will see we get a reading. And we get a reading around about 1,4 volts. So it's around 1,4 volts. And again, you'll see there are two sets of numbers. There's one that goes to 15 and the one that goes to 3. At the bottom, we've chosen to connect it into the 3 volt uh, connection. So I look at the 3 volt number, the number that goes up to 3. So here, it looks like it is around about 1,4 volts. I've got a reading there of 1,4 volts, which is about right. Because these cells are close to new, and when they're brand new, they can deliver 1,5 volts. So that's quite close tells me that my cell is pretty new. If you get a value that's around about 1,1, that means okay, your cell has been used quite a bit and is starting to run flat. If you get a value that's less than 1, then your cell is not going to last too, too much longer and your light might be a little bit dimmer. I'm going to do one more thing, and that is add another cell into the circuit. So I need to unclip the one clip clipped in myself. See that uh, they clipped in there together. And 
Okay, so connect that on. And what you notice about my light bulb? Brighter. Much brighter now. And uh, if I look at my readings, I've now got some different readings. This one now says 230 milliamps. So here I've got two cells, and I get 230 milliamps, which is the same as 0 0.23 amps. 0.23 amps. And then over here, the voltmeter reading, let me have a look, is around about 2.6. So if we look at those values, except uh, yours might be slightly different. You'll put yours in your table. It'll be one cell, two cells, then three cells. With one cell and two cells, what's happening to the current? If I add a cell, what happens to the current? Goes from 160 milliamps to 230 milliamps. The current increases. Then what happens to the uh, voltage? goes from 1.4 volts to 2.6 volts. So that also increases. On the first page of your uh, experiment sheet, there are a couple of things that I'd like you to do before we get to the experiment. The first one is the aim. The aim of this experiment is to investigate the relationship between potential difference and current. So the first blank space, you can write potential difference, which uh, is the following. Potential difference, that's the first thing. And the second thing is current. Those are the two things that we are looking at in this experiment. Hypothesis, a fancy word for a prediction or a guess. If we were to look at our experiment and we think, uh, if I was to guess what's going to happen, I would say that as we add cells to the circuit, as we add cells, the current will increase. As we add cells, the current will increase. And what else will increase? Also, your potential difference, your voltage or your potential difference, the same uh, thing. So your hypothesis there will say, as we add cells to the circuit, as we add cells to the circuit, current will increase. so will potential difference. That's our hypothesis for this experiment. 